So in this module, what I wanted to cover was mapping objects on Hadoop. And these mapping objects would be sources, targets, transformations that would execute in a Hadoop environment. Now, whether it's using Hive on MapReduce, Hive on Taz, Informatica Blaze, or Spark, there, there's limitations. And one thing that you have to understand is we're leveraging a distributed processing engine, uh, processing framework, I should say, for uh, the workload and how that distributed processing works is totally different of how traditional power center would process the data. So think about a example would be a slowly changing dimension. In a traditional power center mapping, I would have sequences, I would have updates, update strategy, a sequence generator, I would have a unconnected lookup. These are limitations that, uh, uh, that, that would uh, that you would not be able to run on a Hadoop uh, cluster. So that mapping would need to be reconfigured. So you have to think about uh, uh, traditional processing, how it was done in traditional processing versus distributed processing and how that would affect um, the, the data uh, that's being outputted. So high level agenda, we'll look at the sources, we'll look at targets, and we'll look at the transformations that execute on, on Hadoop. In terms of sources, so this is a list of sources that 10.1, 10.0 support uh, that would execute in a Hadoop environment. What that means is, is that if I have a mapping that contains a or Oracle uh, source, that mapping would run on, that, that mapping would execute on the Hadoop cluster where from the data nodes, you would pull data in from your Oracle database and load it to your uh, Hadoop platform. So again, we do support uh, flat file native, HBase, HDFS, uh, complex file reader. Uh, we have a have a module that goes into parsing and talks about uh, complex file reader, so we'll cover that. Uh, obviously, Hive, uh, DB2, Oracle, uh, Teradata, and Ateza. Uh, complex file support. So what this uh, grid here shows is the different Hadoop file formats that Informatica Big Data Management supports. So we do have Avro, JSON, ORC, Parquet, and XML. Um, what I did is that I broke it down to uh, what was supported in each of the distributed uh, frameworks and what was not supported. So as you can see in Blaze and Hive mode, all of these uh, transformations are supported. And what the asterisk is, is that there's some sort of either there's a limitation uh, that you need to be aware of uh, and that is documented in, in the help guide. In terms of Spark, you can see uh, quite a few of these formats are not um, so supported yet, um, just either because Spark doesn't support them or um, Informatica would have them supported in the near future. Again, you'll have to take a look and see, um, you know, in the next few releases if Spark would support these. So uh, one thing that I, I want to mention here, when you're working with different Hadoop distributions, uh, such as Cloudera, Cloudera would support um, Parquet formats. And when you do work with uh, Hortonworks, uh, the Hortonworks cluster, they would support an ORC format. Now, what that means is that it, you know, if you're even working on Cloudera, you could potentially use an ORC format, but that just means additional configuration from a Hadoop admin perspective. Um, and typically, uh, I haven't seen any any customer working on a Cloudera cluster using a ORC format, and vice versa with Hortonworks. So, uh, you know, the Hadoop vendors are, are streamlined into which formats that they were going to support and they're supporting that format right so again Cloudera is uh, all the way into Parquet and Hortonworks uh, supports the ORC format. In terms of um, what we as Informatica would do is that we have uh, wizards uh, that will allow you to quickly build uh, Avro uh, reading from an Avro writing to an Avro JSON or or C, Parquet, or XML format. And uh, that's done through our data processor transformation. And again, like I said, we'll cover, uh, we will cover parsing um, on Hadoop. That will cover how you would configure Avro 
uh, or JSON format. And I'll walk through an example at the, in the next uh, a couple of modules here but this uh, again this grid gives you an idea of what Informatica supports and how it's supported right so if it's a flat structure if it's a hierarchical complex uh, structure we do support it and it will tell you whether it's not supported again um, this is it's 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 totally up to you so when you're designing a mapping now uh, let me take this one step back a customer would possibly have decided what format data that they're going to uh, store the data in right so I had a customer that wanted to do this solely on uh, Avro formats so now you have to go back and you have to build your mappings that would read Avro write data to Avro and again you have to understand um, you know when you're building these mapping uh, when you're building mappings uh, with these complex format right what what is that structure is it flat is it hierarchical and how that uh, how it is supported within uh, Informatica PDM in terms of target again this is uh, exactly the same as uh, sources that we support so uh, we'll talk about complex file writer but support for flat files Greenplum uh, Oracle Teradata uh, Netiza so pretty much your standard um, relational databases that you would typically see at a customer site uh, as well as the HDFS HBase um, uh, Hadoop specific uh, targets. Oh, uh, one thing that I want to note and we did I talked about this in the um, installation pre-installation configuration overview where I mentioned that you would need to have uh, Oracle clients DB2 clients uh, installed and configured on the data nodes right and specifically uh, if you're going to use it for profiling now in 10.1 we have support for scoop and scoop uh, alleviates the need to install the database clients on all of the data nodes and uh, in, in the what's new section of this training program we'll cover what how you would configure scoop and how scoop is used so that's one way to do it but if you're going to use uh, if you're going to use the profiling capabilities that big data management has to offer and you're going to run a profile uh, then you would need to configure a relational database client on all of the data nodes again the ones that we support right now is the Oracle and uh, IBM DB2 okay and transformations that we support on Hadoop so these are all the transformations that you would support on uh, Hadoop again these are all documented and I, I encourage you that you should go through the transformation list that we support because again there's uh, different ways to configure these transformations and they may have limitations of how they are processed on Hadoop again and, and I'll re reiterate this the limitations are typically on the Hadoop cluster and not with what Informatica uh, does right because there's limitations of high how I would uh, interpret our mapping uh, same thing with Scala and Blaze so I urge you to go through the documentation and look at that um, the, the the most common um, uh, the most common transformations that you would use are what are defined as core transformations right these will be your aggregator expression filter joiner a router a union transformations um, notice that I put sequence generator up there and in a couple of slides I said hey you know sequence generator is not supported when you do a slowly changing dimension mapping but I put sequence generator because remember now we have three engines that uh, Informatica supports MapReduce Spark and Informatica Blaze Informatica Blaze is the engine that would support a sequence generator and same thing with the update strategy now when you look at update strategy you might say that well Hortonworks supports updates how does Informatica support the update strategy so we do if you're using the Hortonworks data platform we do support our transformation the update strategy transformation on uh, Hortonworks now there's again when you're designing the the mappings that use update strategy or sequence generator 
you have to be aware of how the Hortonworks platform, the Hadoop platform processes the data, right? There's additional, so specifically around the update strategy. So if you're going to use the update strategy, there's different configurations that you would need to uh, you would need to configure on your Hive table in order to to leverage the update strategy. Uh, again, uh, you know you'll have to work with your Hadoop admin to define what these uh, configuration is, and uh, I believe these are documented in our help guide uh, as well as to uh, what you need to do to configure a update strategy. Um, we do support the data quality transformations so you have all of these transformations that would run on the uh, Hadoop cluster as well so if you're doing any type of um, address validation parsing um, any type of standardization consolidation that we'll talk about in in, in our data quality on Hadoop uh, module uh, you will be able to leverage this uh, one thing that I do get a question about is uh, Hive UDFs um, you know, do we support Hive UDFs? And the, the, we don't, you can leverage the Java transformation to make calls to the Hive UDF. Um, so that's one way uh, you can, uh, you can le leverage uh, Hive UDFs. Okay, so this was a very quick module that covered transformations, uh, mapping objects that are supported on, on Hadoop. And hopefully, with the number of transformations that we support on the three main engines that uh, three main distributed engines that we support, I hope that you know you, you do take some time and actually think about the design, right? Because ultimately, what what's most successful in implementation is how you actually design that mapping and knowing the different limitations of the the Hadoop engines, right? Versus um, what Informatica supports would make you a successful uh, developer.